Hello, educators. This is Troy, your instructional designer. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at all the elements in your master course template coming up. Now, instructional designers at Blackboard and a team of people here at the school sat down and determined what are the necessary things that we need in a course. We are in the transition of moving from an old LMS that doesn't communicate with Blackboard. So we're having to build our courses from scratch. This is a great opportunity to kind of reset how we're presenting material. So we've developed this uh, template that we have in our courses that is specific to the items that we might encounter in a course uh, across the entire campus. Uh, this template includes a bunch of rubrics or sample rubrics that we can repurpose for our particular assignments or tests or assessments. And the other thing is we had in mind was a quality matters or a quality measure to take place when evaluating our courses. So you're going to see some crossover there, whether you go with QM or quality matters or another quality measurement tool, this template is for you. Now, if you're seeing this and you're at another institution, definitely check out some of the elements that we have in this template to see if this is something that you want in your course or want to develop for your school in particular. Now, I pulled up a sandbox course with the master course template loaded into it, and we have two different types of modules in this template. The first one we'll see is a start here or welcome module. This has all of the information regarding the syllabus, when the course meets, uh, maybe some student support links or policies that we have at the school. And we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. And the next type of module we have is a learning module. Uh, for a 16 week course, we have 16 corresponding modules. Uh, for an eight week course, we have eight modules with uh, different elements in it. So we're gonna go through each individual module and see what the elements are. Starting here in the start here, a welcome module, we can see that we have several ultra documents. These are pages that have information on them. All of these things are pertaining to the course itself. We have an introduction discussion. This just tells a student, hey, introduce yourself. Uh, you know, what is your year? What is your name? What is your degree? Uh, some information there. We also have the ability for students uh, being on the Google platform to receive Microsoft Office 365. So we have a write up here and directions on how to obtain that. We also have policy statements, student support and student services links. I do have a separate video on how to add these links in our environment to your template, uh, but these are locally uh, hosted links where I have a document or a PDF loaded into our site globally, where we can then access, put them into a course. We can change that PDF or override or upload that PDF one time, and it would affect all of our schools. So that's a way for us to manage all of our policies in one location without having to have our faculty update it every time that one of those statements are updated. The final thing that we have is a review. We could call this a review. We could call it a syllabus quiz. It's just a way for us to make sure that the students have gone through this, uh, this module and the material and understand the course expectations. I'm gonna then click into each page we can see that we have our start here banner at the top with our students in front of our building. Uh, this start here is a course description. When does the course actually start? Uh, we do have instructions that is telling our instructors, hey, this is some of the things that you're going to want to put on this page. Uh, we have our time zone and then a blurb about how students are going to navigate it. Now, as an instructor, I don't have the navigation buttons but if we're in student view, they will have an arrow telling them to go to the next page or the previous page up here at the top. I'm gonna to go then to our next page. We have a welcome to. We can see that the title of this is a uh, editable uh, title that we wanna put our course name and ID and what semester we're in. Maybe we're teaching multiple sections. Uh, you know, Is it an online or is it a residential course? That's where we're gonna add that. And this is a welcome page 
for us to be able to uh, introduce ourselves, what is the goal for this class, uh, maybe some things on how to navigate the course. We have a blurb about meeting our instructor, what is their name, what is their credentials, what is their background, and their contact information. Again, all of these boxes here are editable by finding the ellipsis and hit edit. We can also add more boxes by finding a purple plus sign and telling that we want content or uploading a file from a computer or cloud storage or adding an HTML box. So this is all customizable, all editable to the faculty member. And we wanna make sure that all of this is standardized across the board in all of our courses. The next we have is a course overview page. Again, this is gonna be our section. When does it start? When's the last date to drop or withdraw? Some instructions on final week, uh, course description, the purpose of the course, maybe some prerequisites. And then we get into our learning modules. What module are our are, are objectives for the course level? Maybe our organization or our flow of how our modules are presenting material. We have some assessments and portfolios, grading criteria. So this again is a blank template for faculty to come in, edit all this content. They can see intermeasurable course level learning objectives so they can actually have instruction on how to do this. We can then see we have a syllabus page now, a lot of this information is hosted on a syllabus already, uh, but again, we are giving them the ability to download their syllabus in a file format. We're using Ally in our environment, which is allows our students to download this in an accessible format for them. So I always encourage faculty to upload a PDF version of their syllabus. They can have it as a download link or simply upload it right to that page. And we can see that the students can download alternate formats. Uh, so our, our syllabus page hosts the file of our syllabus. We then have course meetings. Uh, again, there's some instructor information. When does this actually meet? Uh, maybe they talk about the calendar and how they're going to be using that. Uh, you know, virtual meeting, is it a synchronous type of thing where they have to meet once a week or, or every couple of weeks online? Uh, that material will be their course materials. This is going to be the textbook and any other supplemental reading that they're going to want. Maybe this, uh, you know, is a download of some kind of file that they're going to use. So again, it has instructions for faculty to put, maybe they want to put a screenshot a link to download, a link to their course, maybe use McGraw-Hill, um, you know, connect or Cengage MindTap, something. Maybe that's where we're going to put our main link. The next one is technology requirements. This is a technology requirement specific to your course. We do have technology requirements for our overall school, our campus, uh, whether that's an online program and we want students to have access to the internet, maybe this is a way for us to communicate to them, hey, we have computer labs that you can use in particular buildings or in the library. So just the overall technology requirements that we are going to require our students per course. So maybe it's a computer skill that they need. Maybe they need to use Photoshop. Maybe they need to be able to have access to a webcam, uh, you know, for a meeting on a Zoom or some kind of collaborate tool. Uh, so that's where we're going to host that. Next, we have our introductory discussion post. We have our Microsoft Office uh, Word, a PowerPoint, our license for our students, and a blurb on that. And then we have these globally hosted uh, policy statements. I'm going to quickly click on this, and we can see that it opens up a PDF document of our policies. Again, this is hosted on the institution site of our course, so we can add this link into our course. I have a video on that explaining to faculty on how to add this, but just know that the institution will manage that file. All we have to do is put this link into our course, and again, it's updated when the course or the policy is updated. Faculty don't have to worry about that once it's in their course. And lastly, a review, which is, again, a syllabus quiz. 
Maybe this is a quiz of some kind that you want to say, did they actually review the material? Or do we want to ask them comprehensive questions about our syllabus? When does the school, uh, you know, the, the course meet? Maybe a requirement in the technology. Uh, so this is something that you can edit for your use. Or if you don't want to use this review, we can simply delete it by finding the ellipsis and hit delete there. Now we're gonna take a look at our learning modules. Again, if you have a 16 week course, you have one learning module per week. And if you have an, 18, uh, an eight week course, we also have a module for those corresponding weeks. In every module, we have the same material. They are placeholder items for you to use. And I'll just click on here, module three. We can see that we have an overview page, a lecture page, a reading page. We have a discussion, a learning activity, which is more of kind of a homework set, a formative assessment, which would, would be a quiz, a, an assignment with a rubric attached. So this would be an assignment itself and an assessment. Again, this is a test uh, that we have maybe a rubric attached to. And again, these are just placeholders for you to use, to repurpose. If you ever want to add more, we can simply find a purple plus sign. We can hit create. And now it gives us the option to add another discussion post, maybe a journal entry. We can also repurpose these learning activities. If we don't want this to be in the assignment category, we can also change this by clicking on this icon. Uh, this link, we can say we want this to be maybe a homework category. And again, that changes in our grade book. I have a lot of uh, videos specifically related to categories and grade books. So definitely check that out. But just know that faculty are able to repurpose these items here in the learning module for their, uh, you know, items in their course. If they are using some kind of LTI platform, whether it's a McGraw-Hill, MindTap, uh, you know, something, you know, in Cengage, Pearson has their own. They're actually going to be moving deep integrated links into their course. So maybe they're not going to be using these gradable items. They can simply hide them by hitting hidden from student, or they can go and delete it by finding the ellipsis and hit delete. Again, it's all customizable to your course itself. Just know that you're able to add and remove content within these modules. Looking at the overview page, we're going to see that there are instructions again of what the instructor needs to put in this page itself. We have some formatting here. What are some of the learning objectives for this particular week? What are some of the tasks that they are going to be participating in? We can look at our lecture page. The lecture says, hey, this is a spot where I can post maybe a recorded lecture that I have and a video. Maybe I have learning objectives specifically on that lecture. Maybe this is something that we have a PowerPoint that we want our students to download. So we can offer them the ability to download it right here on this lecture page. If you do not have a lecture, feel free to delete this. Go ahead and find that ellipsis and hit delete. The next page we have is a reading page. Again, this has our students up here at the top in a banner. And we also have some maybe learning objectives for that particular read. We have a screenshot of our book. Maybe we have deep links that we want to have them click on and they go right to chapter three within this module here for this module chapter three. So again, if we don't have a reading assignment, uh, we don't have reading instructions, we can delete that accordingly. Again, this template was developed for our faculty to have a foundation to build upon. It has several example assignments, example assessments, and discussion posts for them to actually just repurpose for their material. If they're not using discussion posts, say it's an on-ground course, then they can simply remove it. If they have multiple discussion posts throughout one week, say it's an all-online course, then they can copy or duplicate those individual discussion posts. A lot of faculty have developed their course to run in a four-module method. This is where they have four modules 
represented in units that they can use throughout their semester. And that's completely fine too. You can have as many items you want in those particular modules or as few items as they want in those modules. If you're using a platform like Cengage or McGraw-Hill and you want to move content over from that platform, maybe you don't need these placeholder assignments. The goal for this template was to standardize the way we are delivering information and content to our students. Whether they be fully online or on campus, we wanted to make sure that we delivered it in a way students can obtain that information relatively easily. If this template helps you out, definitely put it into your course. If you don't have a template like this at your school, maybe you wanna think about developing some of these elements and remove things that you are not going to be using or add to if you're gonna be using it in a different manner. I hope this video was helpful. If you need any additional help with your Blackboard course, feel free to reach out or comment with your questions below. For the best tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other YouTube videos. The best help that I can give to you is go to help.blackboard.com and check out all of their walkthroughs and specific settings for your course, either in Blackboard Ultra or Blackboard Original. Thanks for watching.